immigrant, immigration. When I say those words, what do you see? Do you see yourselves? Do you see me? Or do you see somebody different? I think those words get a bad press. And so I'd like to challenge that through the story of one immigrant family. And I'd like to invite you to look through the eyes of an immigrant and see if perhaps we could all be a little bit more successful. Emmett and Shamim were living in, a, in northern Pakistan in the early 1960s. They made a decision to find better opportunities for themselves and for their family. They decided to emigrate to the UK. They travelled first down to Karachi to fly out. They stayed there with a relative, a doctor, who'd studied in England, in Liverpool. But he said to them, don't go. He said, England is a terrible place. He said, they only have one bath for the whole family once a week. And they share a toilet in the back garden with the whole street. <laughs> Shamim quite understandably refused to take her young children to such an awful place. But Emmett had made his decision. He caught the flight, he travelled to England, and he drove to Leeds, where he got a job working in metallurgy. He worked hard, with the intention to save enough money to buy a house and bring his family over. Very soon, that hard work was recognised. He was called into his manager's office, and he was offered a promotion. But the first thing he asked him was, why me? Why not one of my colleagues? They're equally well qualified. This man here, he's been here longer than me. And he works just as hard. Why me? His manager told him, we just don't like that man. And he said, today you treat him like this, tomorrow you treat me the same way. And he said, moreover, he said, I can't work with a man who has no principles. And he quit. So now he's in a foreign country with diminishing money, few friends, and it very quickly became apparent that nobody else would employ him. He recognised after a few weeks that his dream was over. And he realised he'd have to go back to Pakistan. He'd failed. So he travelled back to London, but on the way he stopped in Doncaster. An overnight stay became a week, a week became a few weeks, and he got offered a job at International Harvesters. He worked hard and he saved, and he bought his first house. He put inside a bathroom suite and he sent photos back to his wife <laughs> and she came and joined him with the family. They have succeeded. They continue to work hard and they saved. And soon they bought a second house, which they rented out. They were now business people. Over the years they worked hard, bought more houses, worked on motorways, built a DIY firm. Their son joined them in the business. They did whatever they had to do to make some money. When asked would he travel as far as Scotland for work, he simply said, I've travelled 10,000 miles to be here. Why wouldn't I go another 300 miles? But they didn't just work for themselves. They supported other new immigrants that came to the area, supported local charities, did good for the community they'd grown up in, that they were, their family were growing up in. Unfortunately, in 1999, Emmett passed away. But before he did, he asked his son, Nadim, to come in. And he told him, I'll be leaving some money. It's for good causes. And when the time is right, you'll know what to do. For five years, Nadim struggled. He never knew what to do. And then one, one morning, in 2005, he turned on the television and he saw an earthquake in Kashmir, in the north of Pakistan, a few hundred miles away from the place that Emmett and Shamim had started on that journey so many years before. And he knew immediately what he had to do. He travelled to Pakistan, gave initial aid, arrived in a village where nobody else reached for days. And then he went back some time later. And he asked the people in the village, 
what would you like us to do? And they said, we can build our own houses and we can start our own school, but we have no health care. So he said, well, what do you do when one of the children becomes ill? And they said, well, first we rely on the local herbal medicines. And then we pray that God will make them better. And what if he doesn't? Well, then we thank God that he gave us a child at all. A lady in the village said, there are some women who yearn for children and never have any. I was blessed with three, and I still have one. Using the money that Emma had left and raising some additional funds, Nadim set up the AHS Foundation, which opened the primary health care in the village that served an area previously without health care, served an area of 19,000 people. So you might ask, what relevance does a 50-year-old story have to us here today in Doncaster? Well, for me, it's very relevant. You see, Emmett and Shamim were my grandparents. Nadine was my father. Without that story, I wouldn't be here today. Both because they set us on a journey geographically, but also because they set us on a journey in our minds as well. They set an example for us to follow. My grandfather had a, had a very simple understanding. He understood that to be successful, you have to define success for yourself. And he had a simple definition of success. He believed that the purpose of life is to earn the respect of your fellow men, the love of little children, and to leave the world a little better for having used it. Let's think a bit about that. To earn the respect of your fellow men. Why might we respect my grandfather? Because he was a successful businessman, perhaps. He set up a business that we still run today. Because he found better opportunities for his family and inspired them. His grandchildren now run businesses all around the world. They do good work, employ people. Maybe that's why we should respect him. Because he got up left his place of birth, left his home, left everything he knew, and travelled to the other side of the world to find those opportunities. Maybe. But for my grandfather, respect was caveated. It wasn't about wealth or money. It was caveated. The respect of your fellow men and the love of little children. Now, I don't remember him as being a wealthy man, and I don't remember him as being a businessman. I remember him as somebody who, when I went into his lounge, He'd always have time to talk. And when I came home from school, he'd make mango ice cream because I loved it. I have a little girl, she's two. She loves her daddy. But she doesn't love me because I buy her toys or because I drive a nice car. She loves me because I spend time with her. And because when we're walking down the street and she wants me to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star Chocolate Bar, <laughs> I do it no matter who's around. The love of little children is all about giving without any expectation of anything in return. And it's about taking down the facades of a building society. The respect of your fellow men, the love of little children, and to leave the world a little better for having used it. Now, I think my grandfather left the world a little better for the 19,000 people who now have access to health care when they previously had none. But he also left the world a little better by being an inspiration, by giving us something to follow. To earn the respect of your fellow men, the love of little children, and to leave the world a little better for having used it. That was his definition of success. But he left us with a challenge. He challenged us to define success for ourselves, and by doing so, to be more successful. And he also challenged us to leave the world a little better for having used it. And it's a challenge I'd like to pass on to all of you today. How can you define success? And how can you leave the world a little better for having used it? So now, if I say the words immigrant or immigration, who do you see? Could you see yourselves? Do you see me? Or do you still see somebody who is different? 